Hi, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining me on another Facebook Live. Uh, I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. And I just want to make it clear that, as always, uh, nothing I say or do and during this video should be implied or construed as treating um, or preventing any disease state. So let's get on with our topic today. I read a great article in Men's Health um, about man food and what does that mean in these day and age? I think uh, things are changing. As you saw, the title um, of my talk today is Redefining Modern Masculinity. Now, let me make one thing uh, very clear is that I, I intentionally don't want to redefine it. That's not, that's not my role. It's not my right to define what is masculine and what is not. What I'm saying is that our society does uh, define and what masculinity is. Because uh, I read a, a description and this sounds really good. What are male gender roles? And uh, a male gender role can be uh, described as behaviors or values and attitude that a society considers appropriate. And, and that's kind of important because um, what we as men or any gender or any person, any individual do um, is judged by our society, our peers, our family, our friends, our social network, our country members, our, uh, all of the people within our different groups. Uh, different behavior, different values, different attributes are uh, either a change over time. And masculinity as a phrase is has been evolving. Um, obviously, it meant something very different um, hundreds or not thousands of years ago than it means today because our society has changed. We've become more agrarian, we've become more monetary based. Um, so our, our values and our attitudes and our behaviors have shifted dramatically based on cultural changes, based on economic changes, industrial changes, technological changes. So I, I want to take this time to look at that and adapt because we have a, a lot more people more than ever in, in the history of our uh, uh, race at least in modern times, choosing a more plant-based diet. And um, a lot of feedback originally, look, I, I went vegan back in um, 1985. So back then, you know, definitely the manly food was considered eating meat and potatoes, right? The, the good old men's food. But where does that come from? And I'd like to take a look back at it. And again, I'm not making any assumptions here. This is just conversation. So don't say, Jeff, you're wrong based on this study. I mean, you're welcome to say that. Please do. But I am not making any, this is fact, this is how it is. I'm just putting this out for conversations so we can all talk about it, enter it into discussion, think about what we're choosing as a society, what we're choosing for personal behavior, what we're choosing for the way we relate to others. And how are how is that being changed uh, both in our society, but also in, in within our groups, within our families, within that. So let's take a deeper dive at where, what are some of the accepted roles and attributes men have in the modern Western society? Well, the traits are, some consider the traits to be strength, uh, courage, independence, leadership, um, assertiveness. Now, all of these things can be directly or indirectly attributed to uh, testosterone. Uh, testosterone is a hormone that is found in both men and women, but in larger amounts generally in men. Now, <clears throat> there are what is considered by society sometimes positive attributes to testosterone and sometimes negative attributes. And a lot of that has to do not only by the level of testosterone, but by the uh, actual choice of the individual to adapt to that influencer. Remember, testosterone is an influencer on our life, but we don't have to incorporate behavior or actions built on it 
that is totally a choice that is up to us to either manage, control, or not that type of behavior that can be um, uh, influenced by the levels of testosterone in a man's body. So what comes of that? In, in that relationship, we have two major buckets that um, most people, I think, can agree on uh, were traditional roles for uh, men, and that is one, being a protector, right? Protecting loved ones from threats, making us safe and secure. Um, and then second, a provider, uh, providing means for survival for loved ones, food, shelter. Originally, now more so it's monetary. Um, we're now being providers through income, uh, which can mean going to a desk job in an office place so that's a far cry uh, than building a, a, a wood hut uh, for a place to live and, and going out to actually seek food. So you can see how far our roles have changed. And, and with the advent and invention of currency, with the invention of modern machinery, a lot of the things that required strength aren't required anymore. Uh, hauling heavy things to build homes, to build structures, to, to create safe places. Um, and then using uh, that being replaced by money, being able to for us to go buy food at a grocery store instead of having to go out and get it or per procure it ourselves. So what were those food choices? So we look at two major buckets of food choices, and that is animal foods, what people call foods. Um, animal foods and plant foods. So in the old gender stereotypes, and I say that because there's always, we are all individuals. There is no stereotyping. When it comes to it, any human being, whether regardless of the gender um, or, or preference or anything, can have different choices in their lives. But I'm just talking for conversation purposes, what some generalities were uh, as we viewed them over the years. So the men were the hunters and fishers of animals and women traditionally were the gatherers of fruits, nuts, seeds, veggies, things that could be picked wild. Now, both genders obviously did both in different cultures and different in studies, um, but maybe that's part of where this understanding, even if it's a misunderstanding of our historical paths, of our historical backgrounds um, that men hunted, women gathered fruits and vegetables. And that's where the two, you know, fruits and vegetables are for women and the meat and the animal products are for men. Maybe that's where some of that comes from. Maybe where some of that association still lingers today, even though it may be totally inappropriate. Um, obviously, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know how unhealthy a animal-based diet can be, which is why I talk about it, which is why I formed the company I did to really offer people an approach to getting healthier through fitness and plant-based nutrition. Uh, my goal is to help people live the strongest, healthiest possible lives they can. And I'll get to that in a second because it plays a very important piece as to what it means to be a man in today's society. So, the first was the the you know that you need protein to build muscle. Well, obviously, protein uh, muscle is made from protein, and yes, it is required to do that. But plants have all the protein that you really need, and I, you know I, I hope you know that by now by seeing the amazing plant-based athletes that are out there, and and the wonderful film Game Changers. Uh, it was co-produced by James Cameron and starring James Wilkes. A phenomenal movie that even included some uh, discussion on, uh, <laughs> on why it's not so manly to eat meat. And uh, they showed that pretty eloquently in the movie. I won't give it away for those of you who haven't seen it yet, but do check that out because uh, I think it's a very important piece. And part of what they talk about is the whole sexuality. So obviously one of the roles of being men is our, our sexual role and in, in that. And for sexual health, it's, it's very, very clear. Um, you can read about it in uh, the book, uh, Vegan Sex, uh, Vegans Do It Better by Dr. Joel Kahn. 
and Ellen Jaffrey Jones, um, a great book, uh, and go into the research to see um, why, and even in the Game Changers, they talk about this too a little bit and actually show it um, about uh, erectile function. Remember, it's all about the blood flow. And when you've got uh, fat and cholesterol clogging the arteries, that cuts blood flow. And where there's no blood flow, there's no erections because erections are all about blood flow. So sexual health is totally dependent on that. Now, on the flip side and the positive side, plants are, have very good sources of nitrates. And nitric oxide is one of the things that helps vasodilation, increase blood flow. So that's why you could possibly and potentially have a much longer and healthier and active sex life uh, consuming a plant-based diet. So when you get down to that, well, then you say, what about the testosterone? What about soy and the phytoestrogens? Well, it's amazing when every time I hear that, because one, <laughs> it's usually from these guys with a big gut drinking beer belly and man boobs. And, and, you know, uh, all of those are actually caused by something that is far more estrogenic than, um, than soy. And it, listen, I want to make it clear. Soy has no estrogen in it at all. Estrogen is only found in animals. Uh, it is created by animals. Plants create their own version of it called phytoestrogens. Human estrogens, animal estrogens can be up to a hundred times or more stronger than phytoestrogens. Obviously, a plant doesn't need the level of estrogenic activity that a human being or an animal needs. So ours is much stronger for our purposes. Plants do a much weaker version of that for their purposes. And it's funny when I hear the, all the fear talk about soy, and then you see the guy drinking beer, and I realize, and I say, do you realize the hops? in that beer is actually magnitudes higher in phytoestrogenic. Um, look it up. Uh, it, the hops is one of the highest in phytoestrogens of all the plant in the plant kingdom whatsoever. And that drinking high quantities of that actually can lead to that. Not only that, it is a known fact that alcohol suppresses testosterone levels. <laughs> so by drinking beer, you're actually lowering your testosterone and shooting up your estrogen <laughs> levels. And that's considered manly. I mean, how many times do you watch a football game? The most watched man sport on television is all beer commercials. Beer commercials, a product that seriously is clinically known, published human studies over and over again, lowering your testosterone, raising your estrogen, giving you man boobs and fat. Body fat produces more estrogen. The more body fat you carry, the more estrogen because body fat itself produces estrogen cells. So look, this is so ridiculous when I hear somebody who's got, you know, solid muscles consuming soy and <laughs> you got the guy with man boobs drinking beers and, and look, and then he's like, okay, but I'm going to have my scrambled eggs for breakfast and I'm going to have a glass of milk with that. And I'm like, you understand that's breast milk of a cow. They produce estrogen in order to create that milk. <laughs> and you're drinking it full of cow's estrogens, up to 300 times stronger than anything you find in soy. You know, and then an egg. Do you know what an egg is? It's an ovary produced by a female bird. <laughs> an ovary produced by estrogen. That's how they ovulate. I'm like, if you want the highest estrogen thing on the planet, go for eggs. But no, they're drinking the whey protein full of estrogens and, and the, the dairy proteins full of estrogens. They're drinking the, 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 the whole eggs for building it full of estrogens. And you're telling me about soy? Wow. We've got a lot to learn. Guys, if you want to be more manly, a plant-based diet is truly where it's at. And, and I say this because I'm going to actually post this, this study here, a systematic review and meta-analysis that included 15 placebo-controlled treatment groups. Um, and they looked at actually at an additional 32 reports with 36 treatment groups and found no effects of soy protein or isoflavone on testosterone, sex hormone binding, globulin, 
uh, free testosterone or any free androgen index at all. The research is out there. I'll post it here in the links for you guys to read. Let's get over the soy myth and let's actually look at what is causing elevations of, of estrogen in men and causing a downtick of uh, testosterone. Did you know that uh, just a few alcoholic drinks can bludgeon your testosterone uh, by up to 70% for 48 hours. I mean, you know, the guys thinking that they're going out drinking and being manly, no, you're decreasing your manliness. <laughs> you're lowering it. And if you're drinking beers, you're actually even raising your femininity. Well, that may not be a bad thing for some of the guys out there that actually could use a little bit that, more of that in their life. But if you're really focused on that, you know, alcohol or or look at opiates. Okay, so then you say, well, my diet's affecting me a little bit. Now I'm on pain relievers because of it. Do you realize pain relievers can reduce testosterone by up to 90%? It can just destroy testosterone levels in men. Painkillers, standard opioid painkillers. Um, yeah, this is, this is, you know, when we look at this, if we have a clean, healthy diet, we won't need those pain relievers, hopefully, ideally, um, if we're in a truly healthy state and we're feeding our body what it needs and we're supporting our body with lots of nitrates for proper vasodilation, not only helping us with our sports performance, but helping us with our sexual performance as well. This is how you can improve your true masculinity, not your aggressiveness, not your your nastiness, not being a jerk in the gym. Nobody likes that. I'm sorry. Nobody wants that. Um, and, and let's start moving that strength to lifting people up, protecting, doing good things with, uh, with that strength and that assertiveness, doing good things with that courage and independence and being strong. We're stronger together. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, if you are eating a diet that you know could lead to heart attack, strokes, diabetes, cancer, what is that? How is that going to help you in your two most important roles, right? To be there for your family and your loved ones, to be a protector. You cannot protect people if you're on kidney dialysis or you're on cancer treatments and wiped out. You cannot be there for them. If you want your, to play your role well as a protector and a provider, how are you going to provide if you're in the hospital? How are you going to protect somebody if you're sick or dead? You can't. And can you look in your partner's eyes? Can you look in your child's eyes and say, this hamburger is more important to me than being there for you. I won't be here to see you grow up and get married. I won't be here for you when you need me in, in your older age. I won't be here for you to see you have your own child, my grandchildren. Can you say that that hamburger is worth more to you than that? We know there's a direct correlation and link between a, a meat-based diet. It is not manly to die. It is not manly to be sick and to be disease state. It is not. It is not manly to be drunk and, and suppressing your testosterone. It is not. It's time to get past these BS excuses and start stepping up, start manning up and do the right thing. Do the right thing for you, for your health, and be the strong, healthy, compassionate person that you take care of yourself so you can be there for those people who are counting on you, who love you, who want you to be there with them, who want to be proud and show you their accomplishments as they grow through life, who need your help and your guidance. Be there for them. That's being manly. So I hope you've enjoyed this role. I wanted to address this because I know I've been attacked on so many occasions throughout the 35 years that I've been a male who's been vegan. And I really wanted to address some of these uh, stereotypes, some of these 
things so that we can move through these, so we can carry on a conversation and say, hey, wait a minute, let's not buy this BS anymore. Let's let's move forward to something different. Let's let's be better than this. I want you to be the healthiest, happiest person out there. Enjoy your life. Great physical fitness level. Yes, you can be strong. Yes, you can be, uh, you know, have the muscle, have the uh, agility, have the performance that you can enjoy for your whole life. Not just in the beginning until the diet takes over, the standard American diet takes over and puts you in the hospital, puts you on medications. You don't need to take that path. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for those who love you and are counting on you. And I hope you make some good choices, not only in your food choices, but in your supplements and your fitness regimen that help you be there for the long haul so you can celebrate life with those who love you. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the quotes uh, in the comments section, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thanks again. We have a stellar lineup of guests uh, coming up uh, for our Facebook Lives. So in the the next couple of weeks, we are going to have, hang on a second, I'll just pull it right up. We are gonna have Bicycle Brendan. He is a vegan who has the Guinness World Book of Record for uh, bicycle riding from uh, the Northern to the Southern tips of the United States. Amazing athlete there. We've got uh, guests from Vegan Mainstream, guests from uh, In Vegans We Trust, and Pete Cervoni, my good friend, dear friend, vegan chef from Good Catch Foods, who brought you all these amazing uh, crab cakes and shrimp, all vegan, of course, that are doing amazing things to promote uh, alternatives for seafood. Um, So I hope you can join me for the next series of Facebook Lives. We're gonna have some great guests on board and, um, and I hope you enjoyed this and love to hear your feedback on today's comments. Thanks, I'll see you next week.